I'm sitting outside and it's raining and it sounds wonderful and I thought I would make a YouTube for my class project because I couldn't come up with anything else to try to create and I didn't really want to try to write anything. And so I would love to uh, hopefully speak loud enough so that you can hear me over the rain. It is pouring and smells so wonderful. I wish you could smell it. Um, I would like to share uh, a little of my journey with science and mind and what it has meant for me to, to be at the center, to be in David's classes, and to uh, be open by this incredible teaching. When I first came to science and mind classes, I, um, oh, I was like a sponge. I absolutely loved it, and I would just go off in the states of bliss while I was in class. My heart was so open, and I was hearing, I was hearing things at such a deep level. I, I could feel that I was touching upon the truth of my own being, and the words were so beautiful. But it was just more like, more like just being than learning or any of that. It was as if I was just in a state of constant grace. I would go home and rewrite the chapters as I would study them and I would contemplate them for hours. I would sit in meditation. I would actually just drift automatically into meditation. I've had formal practices, but I find that I'm just naturally called to go within and I just like doing it that way. I do love to contemplate. I love to uh, find opportunities to bring into practical experience all that I am awakening to. So I set out to serve as much as I possibly could uh, while taking classes because there is something about this awakening. You know, you, for me, you can just see when an awakening is real in someone because they no longer have thoughts about themselves. They have to give. They simply have to give back. And it's not for self-glorification. Your heart is open for the good of all. And that includes yourself, without it being a self-centered uh, focus. It seems that when the heart is truly in service and, and responding to that deep call, at that level we know that there is nothing outside of us. And that our very giving to anyone, or to anything, we to actually give to our own self. And you can feel it because of the tremendous joy. The tremendous joy of giving of yourself to anything, to anyone. Whether it's of your time, your talent, your money, any of it. It's almost as if you can actually feel the exhilarating um, sweetness of that experience. So at least I can. And what I have found, when I, whenever I have had a uh, fear, a fearful thought, like, oh, money's tight, I can't give this week, or something like that, I can actually feel that contraction in my body. And withholding from wherever I would give money, whether it be to the center, or purchase something that I needed, or whatever that experience would naturally be, I found that in withholding, I could feel in my body the contraction of that withholding. And I think that's what um, our true spiritual practices, uh, they take us to that place of, of we're just vigilant. We can tell what's going on in our minds and our bodies. and. We're aware, we're conscious of what's happening. And you can't give someone a servant's heart. Um, but you can certainly hope 
that uh, they discover it because it is very much the fragrance, I think, of your heart as it awakens. It's just a natural inclination of the soul to give that. Knowing that it's always giving of itself to itself, for itself. And it's an incredible mystery how this works. Sometimes we may experience uh, conditioned feelings that seem like they're an obstacle at the time. And what we can find in our investigations is that a lot of times these things will rise. They will, they will come to the surface. Because the more the heart opens and the awareness is getting greater and the light is getting brighter within, it starts to bring up all that is unlike this true peace that is our, our deepest nature and this love that is the very essence of our being. So if we're having thoughts of, oh, you know, that person is this or that, it's okay to have those thoughts. It's okay for, for that experience to come. And you, can, and you can bless it because, oh, how grateful that you have an opportunity to see a pattern, a conditioning, or a belief that's operative that is actually there to show you that it's still uh, needing to be uh, welcomed into the sanctuary of your own love and heart. And um, it's quite healing to allow ourselves to go into the fear or to go into an emotion that has always just really wanted to be felt. Almost everything seems to spring from a belief that we're unworthy. And we think that we have to work on jealousy or envy or, you know, arrogance and we think we have to work on all of these things but if we really get down to the very root of it all we'll find that it initially comes from that deep sense of separation believing that we're separate from everything else and this really is the foundation of most conditioning and then of course we just add on to that and we have all these little things that we consider petty but really they're there are tremendous invitations to explore yourself and to make peace and every 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 emotion, every fear that comes up. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to not be in resistance to all of these things that exist in consciousness, my consciousness, your consciousness, and the collective consciousness. If you think about it, we are universal mind. And all of these things, whether they're phenomenal or a reflection of pure reality, they are existing consciousness, and that is why we're, we have a tendency to any of them at some point. And the, and the freedom is actually an opening our limited thinking mind that's based on this conditioning around beliefs we've had throughout our lifetime where some of those emotions actually spring from those beliefs. Well, we might feel resentment because someone is not seeing things the way we think they should. Anything like that. The true beauty is to open to it and go, arrogance is here. Wonderful. Come to that song. Let's sit together. I welcome you. I don't resist you. It's okay for you to be here. And it doesn't even matter why. Really. And you'll begin to feel that in your body. Sometimes you can feel a tightness somewhere in your body when you think of the particular uh, emotion that's connecting you in this moment with what's being felt in the body. We'll say resentment and you're feeling it somewhere in the solar plexus. And you just allow yourself to feel it. Completely. It's okay. It's only the mind, especially the spiritual ego. Oh, that's a culprit. That one thinks none of this is allowed, so it puts on the big pretense. Oh, life is beautiful. It's, everything's coming up roses, you know. And it's a pretense. It's just the way the mind tries to mimic 
what is true and real when we're not into resistance to what is. And we hear every teacher, every awakened teacher on the planet, what's the message? Be here now. Love what is. Even if it's something we don't want to look at, it's okay because the mind feeds on resistance and the ego doesn't want to face these things. So when we allow the heart to receive all that is there, allow ourselves to feel it, maybe have a good cry that's been wanting to be felt for 40 years, <laughs> whatever it is, it's okay. Have the courage to go where the mindsets don't go and you'll discover a fresh meadow that opens you to a greater sky of understanding. It's an incredible peace to meet everything with the love that you are without being in resistance to it. And you discover that you love more deeply, more purely, the unconditioned love and acceptance that you feel for yourself, you automatically extend to others. In my own personal experience, it seems that the more this has been the case here, and the more I have felt the love that I am, it seems the more I've been attacked, <laughs> for some reason, uh, by people. And, and I've even pondered that, I'm like, beloved, why, you know, what is this? What is this here for? And uh, I can tell you that that exploration has opened me even more. Because can I find a love so, so deep? Can I allow myself to become a space for compassion? where I no longer take things personally, but rather recognize the pain of the projection that is coming toward me from someone that might not have gone as deeply into their own pain and are still in resistance to it and projecting it onto others. And I think that's the true freedom and the true beauty of this inner work is that the freer we become, the freer we allow other people to be simply because when we have met all of these things within ourselves that we used to fear and project onto others and resent them for it, then we are having unconditioned, beautiful love for ourselves. And we are able to see past what is appearing with another and recognize that there's pain there and the heart naturally flows with compassion. And it's universal. I don't think people have compassion. I think compassion is when people have surrendered themselves to that greater depth, that greater love that has no description and knows no opposite. It's just what is there when we get out of the way. Because basically, if you think about it, we, we think that we exist by how we define ourselves. I am this body, I am this mind, I am what I believe, I am what I do. When we investigate more deeply and discover what is before all of that, we, we begin to take on the eyes of wholeness. And when we are able to see as God sees, then we're able to see the God in each other truly. Not from a mental concept that we've learned, but as the living embodiment of that truth. A moment of investigation can take you into an eternal recognition of who you truly are. So I bless you on your journey to nowhere, because you are everything right now in this moment. You always have been. I'm so deeply grateful for this opportunity to share my heart with you. And um, thanks. <laughs>